Welcome to the BFF Report. I'm your host, Mike B, aka Pony. Today's episode is going to be on Lords of the Ring. No, Lord of the Rings. No, there's only one ring. Lotro. <laughs> yeah, you guys know that game. It went free to play recently, so it kind of deserves a little bit of attention. Uh, I, I know that I haven't done DDO yet, and that's the other turbine game that's out there, so I'm kind of like dancing around it. I'm going to do like all of Turbine's games where they have like Asheron's Call or something like that. I'll do that game before I do DDO, just to be. Just be an ass. All right, character creation in Lord of the Rings Online is nothing amazing. It's about on par for a game that came out in 2007. You get four races to work with, and there are no dwarf females, which I kind of thought was odd, but then again, in World of Warcraft, they're pretty much the most disgusting things you've ever seen. Uh, so I think Turbine made the right decision. There are no factions here, and as far as I can tell, everyone is lol RP with each other, and there are no ongoing fights between any of these races. So as far as I can tell, the, in regards to open world PvP, there is none. They do, however, have a game type called Monster Play, which will allow you to play as either, uh, I guess you, at level 40 or something, or a monster. Unfortunately, though, this is only available to VIP members, who are the monthly subscribers to Lotro. Kind of a major feature to leave out of the hands of the free-to-play demographic completely. I mean, as of right now, I can't even purchase an unlock to give me access. But, whatever. And I was actually pretty pleased to find that the game actually has one completely independent starting zone for every race. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys know how I feel about starting zones. Those were the days. Questing is pretty much what you'd expect from a typical MMORPG. It's, you know, kill X number of this, go fetch that, go talk to this guy, go down in this place and talk to this or pick that up and bring it back to me and I'm gonna give you some XP gold or turbine points. So let's talk about these turbine points because that's the one thing that's different here versus, you know, anything else. There's a number of ways you can earn them. There's a deed system and, and I guess since I'm here I'm gonna explain what this is. The deed system, it feels like it's an achievement thing. Uh, for example, here are a couple things I could kill by doing this move here. Five times and if I do that 500 times then I earn five turbine points and turbine points is the currency that you use in the Lord of the Rings online store obviously the other way you can earn turbine points is well probably besides other things in the game I didn't quite come across uh, buying them with your money so I guess just to put it in perspective I have 45 turbine points right now at level 13 and I don't even know how I got half of them as far as items that are actually sold in the cash shop, you have expansions, quest packs, skirmishes, character slots, wardrobe crap, bag slots, crossover bank slots, more bank slots, and AH slots. Now, that one I actually thought was kind of interesting. You actually can pay to have more slots on the auction house. Then there's also the classes. You, there are two classes that you could purchase through the cash shop. Now, one of the key things in every MMORPG is the mount system, right? Like, how do you get around? Now, in this game, you can mount at level five. <laughs> I've been mounting since I was level five. Uh, but you can't, I'm not even gonna cut that. You can pay for the mount with 500 silver or you can pay for it with turbine points. So how much does this cost? Well, as you can see here, there's a breakout, 400, 1200, 18, 20, and 3100. Then there's a bonus payout, so if you buy a bigger pack, then you'll get more bonus points. So at the very end, you can purchase, you know, for $50, 6,900 points. Now, let's break out how much my horse would cost for a first time player in this game. If I were to pay for the 1200 pack here, it would cost me, now with the writing skill too, and my mount, $12.96. If I were to pay for it with the bundle pack for the 6900, the super pack, whatever, it would cost me $7.46. Now before you guys get your panties in a bunch, you can earn this money easily by the time you're level 20. I'm level 13 right now and I have 100 silver, but I've been buying a bunch of stupid crap, trying to figure things out and all that. I'm sure that somebody who's relatively conservative and sells all of their greys can actually very easily earn their 500 silver needed by level 20. Also, there's a rental horse system that will allow you to, uh, I guess, essentially rent a mount for a 24 hour period or a seven day period or whatever, and it'll cost you considerably less than actually buying the horse straight out. So if you think you're gonna be up and pull an all nighter and play for 24 hours straight because it's not game time, it's real time, then knock yourself out. All right, so that's enough about the cash shop. Now let's talk about other features of the game. Of course, there is, you know, professions. You can do a me like metalworking, and I'm sure there's leatherworking. There's tons, there's just tons of different professions you could choose from. I think I chose logging or woodworking or something, and basically I went up to every other tree and I was able to chop on it and get logs from it, and I guess I could build something later on if I wanted to. 
the, the animation here is kind of screwed up. I don't know if you noticed that. I'll run this other one here. So I, I walk up to it and I just kind of take like one swing at it and I guess I just intimidate it to get into my backpack. No, no, no. You best get you best get in this backpack. That's right. Break yourself. I also thought it was kind of weird that, you know, everything was labeled. For example, this is a gate. In case you didn't notice. More animation awesomeness with this union guy here taking his nap breaks while working like a champion. I don't know how that works. I guess the answer to why there's no open world PvP is pretty easily answered with this simple demonstration of how to see through, uh, well, everything. And I know there's a die system and there's, you know, the wardrobes, the cosmetic items you can use to cover up all this crap, but god damn, do I look terrible. I'm wearing like a skirt and a Three Musketeers hat and a cape. Come on. Unfortunately, unlike most MMOs, looking absolutely ridiculous does not always equal awesome deeps. And I understand that in general in MMORPGs, that you're, you're always corpse looting, right? <laughs> But this corpse isn't even mine. It's just sitting here. I always feel bad. I don't. It has nothing to do with my quest. It's just a dude hunched over dead, and I just robbed him. Getting back to the actual game features, let's talk about death. They give you the ability to revive yourself instantly, but it's on a cooldown. The alternative is retreating, which will port you and your body back to the nearest spawn point, forcing you to go all the way back to wherever you were. The alternative alternative dollar sign is to pay for a revive, which costs 150 points or one to two dollars worth of turbine points. So obviously not something you'd probably want to be paying for over and over again, just do the walk. Probably the absolute best feature in this game is the ability to play an instrument. And, and you know, you can actually get together with some friends and you guys could sound just as as you do in real life with your stupid garage band. I'm not really gonna talk about the lore too much, to be honest, because it's J.R.R. Tolkien. I'm really like, what is Mike B, aka Phony, gonna say about the guy who made the Lord of the Rings series? Come on now. But what I can say is that I, I, I can usually find just about anything to bitch about, right? I mean, I, I, I clicked in this video so far, I've bitched about a couple things, but overall, I had a very difficult time finding things that I didn't really, really like about the game, like turnoffs, like things that just makes me go, wow, the developers put that there to piss me off. I couldn't find a lot of things like that. The game is actually pretty solid. It hurts me to say this. It's a pretty solid MMO and it's free to play. Now, remember, the game is not doing anything revolutionary. It's not blowing your mind in any particular area or anything like that. It's just like right there in the pack. And the best way to, it's, it's well-rounded. Like The word for it really is solid. It is a solid MMO. The cash shop is gonna be the biggest stopper for you guys, unless you just don't like Lord of the Rings Online or Lord of the Rings series or whatever. But if you can get over that, then you know what? I, I really don't, <laughs> I feel like I'm being too nice because I'm used to just tearing into things. But you know what it is? I think it's because I just played Final Fantasy XIV and you know, pretty much anything's looking good to me right now. Hey, what's up girl, what you doing? All right, so there. Now, admittedly, I had only seen the movies and I don't read anything but the internet. So I really don't know like anything except for the movie, you know, with the Frodo guy and the little Schmeagle dude and the, the dude, the wizard guy. I think that's Magneto, right? Isn't that Magneto? I don't know. So anyways, it's free to play now. So those of you guys who were subscription and maybe canceled your account, are you guys gonna go back? Is this enough to make you guys go back? How about those of you who didn't wanna pay for it because it's a subscription-based account and maybe you just were really weren't that interested in it? Are you guys gonna play the game? Let me know in the comments below or at AKMikeB on Facebook and Twitter. I'll see you guys later.